In a film trailer, there are many conventions that are followed in order to fulfil the purpose of advertising the film to its target audience. Many people will have a genre preference, so it's very important to convey the genre in the trailer so people watching it will be able to instantly recognise the genre and be able to guess what the film will be like. It is also very important to convey the narrative in a trailer so people watching it will be able to get a taste of the story and want to see more of it. The genre of our film is film noir. We have followed many of the conventions of a classic noir film in our locations, cinematography, narrative and mise-en-scene. Referring back to my initial research, film noir uses a lot of urban settings. The everyday theme of this type of location makes it feel more real for the viewer. When used in crime films, the settings will be dark and damp in the more dodgy parts of towns, such as alleys. Scenes will often include rain because it makes the characters seem more hidden as it would be harder for them to be seen or heard. We use several alleyway locations filmed at night to represent the genre we were going for. We use these locations to show meetings between the two villains and scenes containing violent or dark events, such as the fight scene and the scene where Julian is searching a dead body. I also wrote that the main character in a film noir will normally be related to crime in some way, such as a detective or a gangster. They will usually have some sort of flaw that will harm them. Our main character, Julian Finch, is related to crime because he is a detective. His flaw is that he gets too involved in his work and he gets himself into things he can't handle. These two clips show the dialogue we have used in our trailer to reference this. I'm not going to spend my whole time chasing my real lives. This is not your case, Julian. Just don't get involved. We know you. Referring again to my initial genre research, film noir styled lighting is always low key. As film noir is often used in crime films, low key lighting fits well because it adds suspense and focuses a lot on the shadows. So you might not see the actual action taking place, but you'll have to guess it from the shadows. We use low-key lighting a lot in our trailer because it is very important for film noir. Here are a few examples from our trailer. In this shot, the lighting is used to create mystery for these two characters. The lighting in this shot helps emphasise the fact that the character is so focused on his work and is being isolated from everything else because of it. In the final shot of our trailer, the low-key lighting helps mask the face of the villain who has captured the hero. The soundtrack to our trailer used conventional instruments for a classic noir trailer. These are mainly orchestral instruments such as strings and horns, but it's played in more of a modern way using a faster tempo and faster percussion throughout. The soundtrack we use is quite similar to the soundtrack in the Maltese Falcon trailer, as they both used a string instrument playing long dramatic chords and they both also have another stringed instrument as backing playing shorter notes that are quite short and stabby, giving more tension to the feel of the trailer. Here is an extract used from the soundtrack played in our trailer. And here is an extract from the soundtrack using the Maltese Falcon trailer. They both have one instrument playing long chords and another playing short notes. However, the soundtrack in our trailer feels faster and much more tense. Although the soundtrack is typical of a classic noir trailer, the way we have used it is much more like a neo-noir. The soundtrack for a typical classic noir trailer will be more discreet than what we have used in our trailer. For example, in the Third Man trailer, the soundtrack is used mainly as backing for the voiceover of the narrator, but our trailer is a lot more reliant on the soundtrack. We have used our soundtrack, similar to the way the Sin City trailer has, by syncing up a lot of the actions and shot transitions to the music, giving more emphasis to the action. An example from our trailer is at the beginning we synced up the first few shot transitions to the beat. The shot changes every four beats and adds a lot of emphasis to the start of each bar of the soundtrack. In this example from the Sin City trailer, the same technique is used but in a faster and more irregular rhythm that references the drum track. <laughs> the 
we also edited several actions on beat. Here's a clip from our trailer showing a match being struck on beat. Tell me! We want power! And here is the fight scene we used. The punch and the kick are both on beat. We want power! And here is an example from the Sin City trailer. The car crash and the shot of the man's head being shoved underwater are both edited on beat, and the actual impact of both actions are very prominent. They're back! You're making a big mistake now. You already made a big mistake yourself. Another example of this from our trailer is near the beginning, when a briefcase is kicked along the floor. The briefcase sliding is timed with a reverse symbol in the soundtrack, and the fade transition we use to get to the next shot is timed with the start of the chorus in the soundtrack. <laughs> Referring to my initial genre research, voiceovers are very common in film noir. They will be used a lot to help with the narrative, as if someone is telling the film as a story. Voiceovers are used a lot in trailers. They are important in trailers because they will summarise the plot, and most trailers would not make much sense without them. In our trailer, we used a voiceover of the villain to explain his motives of money and power for the crimes he is committing in the film. While recording the voiceover, I tried two techniques of mic placement. One idea I tried was to have the actor facing a corner of a room and placing the mic behind him, pointing above his head, to capture a very reverberant sound and make him sound very powerful. The other idea I tried was to place the actor and Mike under a jumper to create a very muffled sound to make the character very mysterious. However, it was very hard to understand so it was not used in the trailer. In my initial genre research, I wrote that film noir is often shot in black and white and is considered a very important part of film noir cinematography. However, as we were aiming our trailer to have aspects of both classic and neo-noir, we decided to lower the saturation of our trailer to give the whole thing a bit less colour. Referring to my initial genre research, film noir often uses many techniques to distort objects and characters by using skewed angles. It is also very common to have the main action of a shot in the background. In this shot we have placed the main action in the background and set it to be out of focus. The camera is focused in on a hat that is on the floor and very close to the camera. This shot adds a lot of mystery to the action. In this shot we have used a skewed angle and set up the phone to be in centre screen. This is used to give more emphasis to the fact the character is on the phone, rather than the character himself. In this shot of the two villains walking down an alleyway, a very skewed angle is used. Because of the character's status, this angle is used to give a sense of someone hiding from them, rather than just watching them. In my initial genre research, I wrote that a common prop used in film noir is a cigarette or cigar. The smoke created from this also works very well with the lighting effects used in film noir. In our trailer, we use cigarettes several times to convey the stress that the character is going through, as shown in the following clips. 